guys, Jan here. I got a lot of questions uh, on how to practice headstand safely, and I wanted to answer some of them here and show you how to get into headstand without having to kick your legs. So this is the safe way so that you're most, you're more unlikely to, you know, fall out or roll forward. And I'm gonna show you how to, you know, engage your core and the muscles that you have to activate to get into it safely. Okay, so one thing, if you have any issues with your neck or cervical spine, past issues or current issues, this is probably not safe for you to practice on your own. Um, you probably should, you shouldn't practice it at all if you have any cervical uh, or neck issues uh, currently, but if you've had any past ones, I would consult a professional, maybe your doctor first before you try this. And, you know, seek out a yoga teacher that can help you um, walk through it um, while, you know, you're there one-on-one -on -one together, okay? So if not, um, come to your mat. And we're gonna start um, here in a tabletop position. And what you're gonna do is, from here, you're gonna lace your fingers and keep your palms open, drop your forearms to the floor. So you want your palms open because you're gonna cup the back of your head. All right, and as you have your head on the floor, the, the hands on the back of the head are gonna gently keep the head pushing forward. So you, if you feel it's like rounding frontal movement, you can gently push your head slightly back and have some control with your hands in the back of the head. So definitely not underneath the head. You, you don't wanna be um, standing on your hands at all. They're in the back of the head. And by the way, if you, don't know, you know, where the, the, your head should land, um, the top of your head, where it should feel like on the floor. You want to take your base of your wrist crease onto your nose and extend your middle finger back. Wherever your middle finger lands on the crown of your head is where you should feel the connection between your head and the mat. So that's just a good measurement for everybody. All right, so come on down to your forearms, lace your fingers, separate your palms. You want to walk your elbows in so they look about shoulder distance apart to you because this is what's going to tend to happen anyway your elbow is going to come out like a little further so you want to start to walk them in shoulder level and then you're going to start to squeeze your inner elbows towards each other so you've got some power in your arms bring your head down and don't put your hand under your hands underneath your head they're definitely behind the head and right now as soon as you push your head down it's good to push the forearms into the mat, like you're trying to push the floor away without lifting your head up off the mat, but just get a little bit less weight on the head, therefore less impact or force in, into the cervical spine of the neck. So you can stay right here and just experiment or curl your toes under and lift the knees. From here, you wanna walk your feet in a little bit. And as I do this, you can see that my hips come more over my shoulders. So once you got your hips over your shoulders, you're really halfway there. Half the battle is, is won. So as you're here, keep squeezing the inner elbows towards each other. Push your forearms down into the mat to get some of that pressure off of the head. And you can just hang out here. Okay, next step, if you wanna go a little further, you're gonna connect one knee into your chest and lift the foot and breathe. Three, two, one. As you see, if I, if I lift one foot off the floor and drive my knee in, I can roll up a little higher onto the ball of the other foot and my hips come more over my shoulders. Again, I'm halfway there. Now I'm gonna place that foot down and then draw my other knee in and breathe. Roll up maybe a little higher, maybe on the toes this time, breathe. Three two, and one, and place that foot down. Okay, next step is if you drew one knee in and you feel comfortable there, you're gonna roll up onto the toes and maybe pick the other foot up. So you're kind of like in this little egg shape. You're very close to the ground, so if this happens, 
no big deal, right? And come on into it again. Knee to chest, knee to chest. Remember, you're gluing your knees to your chest. Use your hands to push your head back so you don't roll forward. And then lift. From here, you keep one knee into the chest. It's very important as you extend. One leg straight up. And then you can bring it back down. Hug it into your chest and maybe the other leg. Lift straight up. And then maybe the other leg will eventually straighten or trace the leg up. And you're there. And headstand. And then as you come down, it's, it's a good, nice thing, nice counter pose to do to rest in child's pose. Just rest in child's pose. So there you go. There are my tips for practicing headstand safely and a way to practice without having to kick up. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below. Namaste.